I'm going to show you how to do a first reconstruction using Morec. And um, the tutorial outline is that first we start Morec, then we open the projection data. Next is to select regions of interest, followed by configuring the reconstruction geometry. After that, we are actually already ready to do our first reconstruction and inspecting the results. There we need maybe to adjust some levels. Also cropping and rotate could be of relevance. And finally, I'm going to show you how to save the results. And with that, we can start now to take a look at how to do it. And first we need to start Morec. Again, here is on the Mac. So the menus you see up here, they are actually on this bar on Windows. So that's a little bit of a difference, but otherwise everything looks the same. So we are now on the projection tab where you can select projection images and reference images. And let's look up the data. So um, I have them on the desktop, which actually is not the ideal place, but anyway, I have it here for the tutorial. So let's select something. Here you can see I have DC for dark current, I have OB for open beam, and I have wood, many projections of the sample. So now I selected the projection data, so I have to click on any of these um, projections. So I take this one, and you can already see it pops up here on the screen. And also you can see this dialog, which shows you suggested open beam images and suggested dark current images. If they're correct, you can just chose to take them. Or you can also here click on this uh, combo box and see different options that could be relevant. So in this case, it's actually correct. So I click OK. And then it also fills in the file names of open beams and dark currents. You can, it's, you can also see here that you have five of these and five of these. And you have 625 um, projections in the projection data. Now we can take this slider and we can rotate the image and we can see that actually it's a pretty wide thing. But um, this is what we're going to work with now. And it's actually very helpful to have it in this wide view because now we're going to select the region of interest that we're going to recon um, make available for re reconstruction. So here um, I want to select a region Sometimes it doesn't work so well. So in that case, start from the lower right corner and then it should work. And um, I mark it like this. And then I click on this projection Roy, get, and you can see it turns orange. The next one is the dose region of interest. Um, in particular for spallation sources, you can have very much fluctuations in the intensity and this can be corrected by marking up a little region up uh, here in the corner, for example. Important for the dose region is that the sample is never allowed to touch it. And you can verify it by sliding again. And it looks pretty good in this place. So let's take that one. What you have up here is the possibility to look at the open beam images. And you can see them here. We have some different open beams. And you can also look at the dark current. Usually it's not very exciting to look at it, but sometimes if there is some problem with your data, it's good to have the possibility to check this. Um, let's go back on the projections. And you can see that this sample actually is standing on the head. So maybe we should flip it. And with that, we can go over here and do a vertical flip. <clears throat> and then it stands in the right way. So now we have set everything we need to about the data itself. So let's move on to the reconstruction geometry. And here you can select which slices you want to reconstruct. You can never reconstruct less than four projection, uh, four slices. But I actually recommend that you do something more. Uh, for internal reasons in the software, 
I recommend that you use 32 images. So for example, let's do something like uh, 500 till uh, 532. Then you can see here the blue region is the region that will be actually reconstructed in this test. Next one is the pixel size. We are going to let it here. I'm saving that for a later tutorial, but it's very important that you set the pixel size to the right value. Not only for um, that it comes in the right display, but also that the attenuation coefficients that are reconstructed get the right values. And next thing we can say is set here is the acquisition angles. And this data was actually acquired at 360 degrees. So I could let it be here. But you can also here select if you want 180 degrees or 180 to 360 degrees. Or you can set any arbitrary angle interval in here. So let's go back to that one. What you also can select is acquisition scheme. Uh, the traditional way is to do in small increments a sequence, but we also have the opportunity to select golden ratio or inverse golden ratio. You can also set the direction of rotation. It actually has an, import, um, an impact on how the, the reconstructed image looks like afterwards, because um, it will be mirrored if you do one or the other. So next thing we have to look at is um, the acquisition axis. That's where the sample is rot the axis where the sample is rotating around. So if you drag the slider, you can see that there is a virtual point about on this position that the sample is rotating around. This is what this red line indicates. Right now it's on the wrong place, so we could manually set it here. Um, I would say it's somewhere, so 27 minus yeah, about 300, so it should probably be somewhere around 270-ish. And if we drag it around, you can see that it's, yeah, maybe correct, but it's not very easy to find this manually by eye. So for that reason, we have here find center of rotation, which gives you this uh, dialog that helps you to find the center rotation. And here you have just find center, click on that. And you can see that all the red dots, they correspond to the center that was found for each slice in the image. But the problem is that the blue line here is a straight line, a um, perfect vertical line. And you can see that there is a slight tilt. So on this side, you can see that it's more red on that side and up here, it's more red on the other side. So for that, we need to use tilt correction. And if I click that one, find center, you can see that this line is now tilted and the fit is pretty good. Sometimes, it's uh, you have a sample which uh, has gap in the middle and then the center estimate algorithm gets a little bit confused so you can like up here get strange jumps and for that to handle that you can select here how many percent of the center estimates you want to use in this case i have set the default 90 percent but it could be anything um, yeah, well, say not less than 50% because then the question is what you have at all. Um, but anyway, now I found a center rotation. I found a tilt angle. So in this case, it wasn't so well aligned. So I have a tilt of 0.36 degrees. And uh, the pivot point is the point in the projection where, it's rot where this tilt is rotating around. And usually you shouldn't change this value. Just take what, what you get. So let's press OK. And um, with that, we are pretty soon ready to do the first reconstruction. I just want to move over here and show you that we have some pre-processing modules 
In this case, we have one called full log norm, which is actually the one that reverses um, via Lambert's law, computing optical thickness images. Then there are some correction algorithms which we are not going to use in this case. You also down here, you have a back projector configuration. Uh, in this case, I have used one called multiproy BP. You can just keep the default value and it's fine. And um, then we can move on to the results tab. And as we haven't started reconstruction yet, the histogram is empty and you still have some dummy image over here. Now to start the reconstruction, you move to the reconstruct menu and start reconstruction. Then you can see that something is going on. And uh, now we have reconstructed 32 slices of this sample. And you can see here, if you drag the slider, which positions you you can look at different slices. You can also here select which image plane you want to look at. You can go through it and you can see here that the vertical plane you can also take this one and look at the other vertical plane. Let's go back. Now you can see that um, it's relatively dark. You may want to change the contrast a little bit. And for that, we have different possibilities. One is to select like something like 95%, then you see it's very bright. 99% uh, less bright, but you can see that there is pretty much burnout in, in this regions, uh, which are very bright, which are not actually captured within the 99%. Looking at the histogram, you can see that there is a long tail out here. So I would suggest setting manual values for, in this case, 1.5, which is actually outside, but it's a nice number. And on the other side, I would set it to minus 0 0.1. Now, negative values are not physical, but thanks to the noise, you will get negative values in, in the gray value distribution. The true value should be here at this peak. Uh, and you can see actually at the peak center, we have zero. So that would be say the physical correct one, but always take a little bit of the negative side to make sure that you have the whole distribution of the histogram within your image data, because that will help you later when you do different uh, denoising um, using different filters. So it's really a good idea to, to keep it in this interval. So you can see that this is uh, rotated a little bit. So we want to change that. Let's do something like minus 30 degrees and start the reconstruction again. And then we can see here, and you can see ah, more or less 90 degrees, uh, 30 degrees. Uh, the other thing is you can see there is a lot of space around the sample. So maybe you want to crop it. And for that, you can set matrix ROI. And um, again, from the lower right corner, mark a region, click get. And then you can see this region is now yellow. And let's reconstruct again. And um, now you can see we got an image which has the size of the, of the sample like this. The last step we have to do is to um, select where to save the data. So let's first browse for a folder. Again, I'm saving it in on the desktop in a folder called Recon. You can name it how you like. And then we select open. You can see the path lands here. Here you have a slice mask, which contains of a base name, maybe with an underscore. So let's rename it to wood. And the number of, of these um, hash signs is telling you how to add zeros from for the numbers. So in this case, I will have a zero padding up to um, 9,999. Uh, 9, um, and I could actually also add one. 
if I like uh, something like this. And um, you can also select which image type you want to save. You can save it as 8-bit, you can save it as 16-bit TIFF, floating point TIFF, which is useful if you want to use um, more quantitative information from the images. You can also do it if you do 16-bit, but then you have to remember for how, um, how the scaling was done. So you can scale it back into the 32-bit. So if you know already that you want to work with the actual attenuation coefficients, then it makes more sense to save as 32-bit. Then you can also save these in multi-frame images. These have the limitation of two gigabytes per image. So if multi-frame TIFF is larger than two gigabytes, then you can't uh, save it. So in that case, you have to go back to saving separate slices. So let's just save it as 16-bit and press save matrix. It's already done here and let's go into recon. And you can see all the images that we have reconstructed in this folder. What you also get in the same folder is um, a recon config. This file describes exactly what the reconstructor has done with your data. So it tells you about um, dimensions of the image, uh, pixel sizes, which center of rotation you used, uh, which uh, scan arc, also which reconstruction algorithms you have been using. It's not human readable, easily understandable, but uh, still all information is there and you can actually load this file to uh, redo your reconstruction next time. Another file which is very useful is um, this citations. It tells you which um, publications to cite when you do this reconstruction. So in this case, it's mainly the software paper. Um, also, you can tell here which version of um, um, the reconstructor you have been using. And also here you can see the back projector which has been used. And when you add more um, post-processing, no, pre-processing um, algorithms, also these will be added in this list. And well, that concludes this uh, first reconstruction tutorial. And um, we have shown how to first load the images, mark what we wanted to reconstruct. Then we did some geometry tuning, reconstructed the first image, and then we changed a little bit in the gray levels, rotated, cropped, and saved the data. And that ends this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.